Welcome back to my channel Gadgets for Gentlemen. In this short video I'm going to show you eight entry-level dive watches that you can purchase anywhere under $600. The watch that I'm wearing today is the Seiko Alpinist and I wear it on this beautiful NATO strap by Watch Gecko. I think this is the Marine National variant. As you can see I have eight dive watches here ready for you to show you some of the um, most important um, things about these watches and this way I have them sorted from very affordable or entry level all the way up to what you could consider mid-level and I would say about $600 would be uh, the start starting point of uh, mid-level uh, dive watches so here on the left, we're starting with entry-level watches. The first watch that I like to show is the Vostok Amphibia. This is the 420059. As you can see, it has this beautiful blue dial with a date window at the three o'clock position. Applied hour markers, a red second hand, and a very remarkable bezel, as you can see here. So no numbers or nothing, just red and black. This watch has a in-house movement by Vostok, which is a uh, Russian company. And this movement is called the 2416. It has 31 jewels, a power reserve of 31 hours, and it runs on a uh, frequency of 19,800 beat per hour. The movement has accuracy of minus 20 to plus 60 seconds a day. Uh, the movement allows you to hand wind the movement. As you can see, we have a very nice uh, case back here, 200 meters water resist. And as you can see here, the crystal is domed. So no flat crystal, but an acrylic crystal here. Dimensions, we're dealing here with uh, 39 millimeters across without the crown. Lock to lock, this distance, 46, and a thickness of 14 millimeters. So quite a thick watch, but also um, quite small in terms of uh, diameter. Now let me just uh, throw it on the scale, just the case, no strap, just the case, I measure 57 grams. So, just for you to consider, the watch comes originally on a metal bracelet of 18 millimeters. And the quality of that metal bracelet is um, very poor. So, I like to throw it on a NATO strap. And that is uh, what it looks like. Uh, this watch can be had for around $80 and I will leave a link in the description so you can uh, uh, purchase it. Finally, let's give you a wristwatch shot. So I'm dealing here with 6.3 inches wrists and as you can see, I think that sits uh, very comfortable. As you can see, that is a wonderful fit in my opinion. Again. This watch is very thick and uh, part uh, due to that domed uh, crystal. But in terms of luck to luck, it sits beautiful as well as the diameter. So up next we have the Invicta Pro Diver 8926OB. This watch uh, originally comes on a very uh, poor uh, metal bracelet in my opinion. I think it was oyster style without uh, solid end links. So I didn't really like it. Inside we can find the uh, Seiko movement NH35A. That is a movement that runs with uh, 24 jewels, power reserve of 41 hours, and uh, it runs at a frequency of 21,600 beats per hour. The movement allows for hacking and hand winding. 
and it has accuracy of minus 20 to plus 40 seconds a day. This watch is 200 meters water resist. We have a beautiful and big crown at the three o'clock position with the Invicta logo that is uh, screwed down. On top, we can find a flat mineral crystal. At the three o'clock position, we can find a date uh, cyclops here. Dimensions, diameter of 40 millimeters without the crown. Luck to luck, we have 48 millimeters and a thickness of uh, 14 millimeters. So very nice dimensions, a bit on the thicker side with uh, 14 uh, millimeters, in my opinion. As you can see, we can find beautiful applied markers. Nice Mercedes hour hand, sword style minute hand, a beautiful uh, second hand with the Invicta logo at the back. Nice logo at the 12 o'clock. I'm not a big fan of the um, inscription here on the case. Uh, this watch can be had uh, for around $100, which is really a bargain for a, um, a watch with a, a Seiko movement NH35A. Um, all in all, I think a beautiful, beautiful watch. Looks uh, very similar to the Rolex Submariner. You have a very nice um, bezel. Pretty good action as well. Lines up nicely. So let me toss it on the scale. So we're dealing with 73 grams, which is quite a bit heavier than the um, Russian watch, the uh, Vostok. Uh, let me also demonstrate the fit of the uh, Invicta uh, Pro Diver here. I think this sits beautifully and it really follows the uh, size of the older Rolex Submariners. Very, very nice profile. So this is what it looks like on my 6.3 inches. As you can see, quite a bit thick. The um, case does not really curve down. It's pretty straight. It's oyster style case. But I really like this fit and I think it's perfect. I really like this watch, um, especially as a tool watch because it's very affordable and reliable. So if you don't wanna break the bank, this is a very nice entry level dive watch that is not as iconic as some of the Seiko divers because it does feel a bit like the uh, Rolex homage. Now let's proceed with the next one and let me just throw it back on the NATO. Also this watch I threw on a NATO because I did not like the uh, metal bracelet. Of course you can also wear it on a rubber strap or an aftermarket metal bracelet. Now let's proceed here with the Orient Ray 2. Uh, this watch originally, originally comes either on a 22 millimeter rubber strap or a 22 millimeter uh, metal bracelet. Um, I'm not a big fan of um, any of those, so I usually just wear it on this uh, very nice NATO strap Zulu Diver. The watch has an in house movement, the F6922, 22 jewels, power reserve of 40 hours, 21,600 beats per hour. It allows for uh, hacking and hand winding. The only downside here is uh, the crown with that beautiful um, inscription. It is very small. So if you do want to hand wind, sometimes it is a bit hard to grab and to screw back in again. That's the only downside here. Accuracy of uh, somewhere between minus 15 to plus 25 seconds a day. Um, big uh, selling point here is, I think, uh, the beautiful dial with that Orient logo here at the 12 o'clock position. Um, beautiful applied hour markers. I 
I really like this uh, date um, windows with both the day and date. I think that's very practical. Uh, 200 meters water resist, uh, mineral crystal on top, flat, a diameter of 41 and a half millimeters without the crown, lock to lock 47, a thickness of 13 millimeters and of course the NATO strap uh, adds a bit of um, extra bulk. This watch can be had for around 140 dollars. Uh, you can see beautiful uh, steel case back and here we can read the uh, Epson uh, company name. So Orient is part of the Epson group, Movement Japan. Simply beautiful, beautiful watch. Let me just toss it on the scale to see how heavy it is. So here we're dealing with uh, 79 grams. So just a, a little bit heavier than the Invicta watch, uh, which I think also makes sense because this watch is quite a bit uh, bigger in terms of the case. And again, I really like to wear this on a NATO strap. I think it just uh, looks beautiful and uh, plenty of options. So this is a truly a very nice uh, uh, watch for your collection. Orient Ray 2, I have it on this beautiful Zulu Diver NATO strap, 22 millimeters, I think Admiral Grey. And as you can see, this Orient is um, um, slightly bigger to most of my, compared to most of my watches, but I think I do get away with it, thanks to that um, lock to lock distance is just just uh, between the um, length of my wrist so I think I can get away with it and as you can see I think it looks beautiful and let's proceed with uh, one of my favorite watches uh, and as you can see uh, there is some scratches uh, on this uh, uh, crystal because I've been wearing this watch a lot so one of my favorite watches in the collection, this is the Citizen NY0040. This one has the uh, black dial, a very uh, glossy black dial. Beautiful. Uh, it also comes with a very nice glossy blue dial, uh, a bit of sunburst. This watch has a beautiful automatic in-house movement uh, by Miyoda, the 8200, 21 jewels. Power reserve of 50, uh, four, uh, 45 hours, frequency of uh, 21,600 beats per hour. Uh, it allows for uh, hand winding, but not hacking. And the movement has accuracy of somewhere between minus 20 to plus 40 seconds a day. 200 meters of uh, water resist. As you can see, it has a flat mineral crystal. Beautiful beautiful bezel with these very big and sturdy grooves not all around but at certain points you can see these very nice uh, sturdy teeth and it has a beautiful date window with both the day and date and I really like the fact that the background of the date window is black so this really kind of blends in with the dial. We're dealing with a diameter of 42 millimeters across without the crown. Lock to lock distance, uh, 48 millimeters. And we have a thickness of 12 millimeters. So that's quite a bit uh, thinner compared to both the uh, Vostok Invicta and orient uh, we can find beautiful applied uh, hour markers all in all i'm a big fan of this watch i think it's beautiful uh, we can see that the crown is situated at the eight o'clock position that is also very uh, uh, different from uh, most of your dive watches which are either based at the three o'clock position or the four o'clock position this watch has been used in the past by the Italian Navy. It was called the uh, Marina Militare. And uh, yeah, it, it, it 
passed many of their uh, sturdy tests. So truly a watch with um, a, a legacy. So this is part of the uh, ProMaster line and this is one of their automatic watches. These days they also do um, watches, I think with, um, with an eco drive uh, system. So all in all, I think a beautiful watch. It can be had for somewhere around 260 US dollars. And let me throw it on the skill, 76 grams. I think that is similar to the Invicta. Um, this watch uh, comes on a 20 millimeter uh, silicon strap, uh, which is not bad, uh, but it is a bit uh, sturdy. And as you can see here, I love to wear it on a NATO strap. Um, this is a seat belt NATO by Watch Gecko. Really like this one. Now let me throw it back. As you can see, I think it, it wears rather nicely on this beautiful uh, seat belt NATO. And it sits very comfortable. I don't know what to say. I think really nice dimensions here. And let's continue with one of my very first uh, watches in my watch collection. This is the Seiko SKX 013. It uh, comes either on a beautiful uh, 20 millimeter metal bracelet uh, that is a bit uh, jubilee styled or it comes on a rubber strap depending on the uh, reference um, you, you purchase. I uh, removed those and I threw it on this beautiful vintage bond uh, NATO strap from Watch Gecko I believe and uh, I really like this uh, combination. Let's uh, run over the basic uh, features of this watch. This watch has an in-house movement 7S26, which you can read here in the uh, 6 o'clock position. The watch has uh, 21 jewels, frequency 21,600 beats per hour, power reserve of 41 hours, no hacking and no um, hand winding. So uh, a bit of a limited um, movement if you ask me, but truly very uh, reliable it has been around for a long time beautiful cutout here at the three o'clock position uh, with both the day and date and as you can see the way they went for this uh, cutout it um, really blends in with the dial in the same position as the uh, nine o'clock uh, hour marker accuracy somewhere between minus 20 to plus 49 seconds a day, 200 meters uh, water resist, ISO certified, it has the uh, Seiko um, hardened mineral crystal which is called the uh, Hardlex. And what I really like about this watch is uh, the, the shape of this bezel. I really like this uh, pattern, this structure. I like the crown at the 4 o'clock position. And maybe the best part about this watch, in my opinion, is the um, dimensions. We have uh, a very small uh, profile with 38 millimeters across without the crown, a lock to lock of only 43 millimeters and a thickness of uh, 30 millimeters. And of course, this NATO uh, does add a little bit of bulk. And as you can see here, um, Seiko also did not forget the uh, case back. And they made this beautiful um, case back, the beautiful logo. Um, here again, we can read the 7S26 movement, very chunky uh, spring bars. So this is a no nonsense uh, dive watch. Really like the bezel, I think it's beautiful. And I was lucky with this one because um, I think it does align pretty well. And in the past, I used to own the uh, Seiko SKX uh, 007, and that was uh, misaligned like everywhere. And this one is pretty neat. So this watch retails for about uh, $330. Uh, let me throw it on the scale. 
because of that uh, uh, small profile, uh, we can find a weight of only 66 grams. So that is very comfortable, especially on the uh, smaller wrist. Let me demonstrate. My wrists uh, measure 6.3 inches. And I think for me, this is like the perfect size uh, diver. I do have a few dive watches with a bigger profile, but I think this one is the most um, versatile, conservative, iconic. Um, I don't think bigger is better, kind of like the dimensions of um, earlier models. Let me try and demonstrate. So here I have it on the uh, NATO strap. And I really, really, really like the way this sits on the wrist. But I think it sits beautifully on this uh, vintage bond NATO strap here on my 6.3 inches. Definitely one of my smaller sized uh, dive watches in terms of uh, diameter, lock to lock, and also thickness. A very nice conservative size in my opinion. So let's continue with the next watch, the Seiko Mini Turtle. This is the SRPC39. It is a beautiful dive watch with a very nice uh, case shape with a blue dial and a blue bezel. Really like this watch. It has beautiful applied um, hour markers as you can see right here. This watch is uh, part of the uh, Seiko Prospex line. And in-house we can find the Seiko Movement uh, Automatic 4R35. Uh, it features 23 jewels, 41 hours power reserve, and it allows for both hand winding as well as hacking. So when you pull out the crown, the second hand stops uh, running. When you push it back in, it continues to operate. This allows you to accurately set the time. Uh, we can see some beautiful uh, drilled locks here. So that allows you to easily change straps. And uh, we have a very nice, quite big crown, not signed. Unfortunately, it would be very nice with the, the beautiful Seiko uh, snake-like uh, S logo that you can find, for example, uh, with the Alpinist like here i think you know <laughs> that would have brought this watch to uh, the next level the accuracy of this movement is somewhere between uh, plus 45 to minus 35 seconds a day 200 meters water resist we have the um, hardlax mineral crystal with a cyclops at the three o'clock position with a beautiful uh, date window with some uh, magnification I really like the hands, I like the uh, hour markers. We have some strong loom. Uh, conservative size, uh, let me explain. I think the diameter is quite big, 42 millimeters without the crown, but the lock to lock distance is only 43 millimeters. So that is very conservative. Thickness of 13 millimeters and a price point of somewhere around 365 US dollars. So now we're heading into the um, uh, yeah, more expensive watches of the entry level dive watches. 4R35, Air Diver, uh, Prospex logo here, and a beautiful uh, Seiko Wave. Let me toss it on the scale. So this uh, case, it um, weighs 75 grams. And of course, if you wear it on a metal bracelet, it will... Um, be a little bit heavier. I like to wear it on this uh, NATO strap by Vario and it does not um, add up a lot of weight or bulk because this is a single pass NATO. i show you what that looks like on this uh, 6.3 inches uh, wrist. I think that is beautiful. So this watch it features both like a very readable dial because of that 42 uh, millimeter diameter. Um, but it also fits very comfortable on a smaller size uh, wrist. 
because of that lock to lock of only 43 uh, millimeters. Not a lot of curve here on the case, but because of that short lock to lock, um, yeah, it wears nice on the small wrists. So $365, it's uh, not affordable, but you do get a lot of watch for this uh, kind of money. So that is the Seiko uh, Mini Turtle. Now let's uh, proceed with this uh, beauty. This is the Glycine Combat Sub 42 millimeters reference GL0185. It uh, originally came on a 22 millimeter oyster style metal bracelet. And as you know, I prefer the NATO straps. Again, this is um, Zulu Diver, a beautiful uh, desert uh, or, or, or yeah, sand colored strap. Really like this combination. Inside we can find a beautiful uh, Swiss movement, the GL224, and the base is a ETA 2824-2 or a Salida. So with this watch, it is the ETA movement. 25 jewels, power reserve of 38 hours, and it operates at a higher frequency than the watches that we saw earlier. Uh, frequency is 28,800 beats per hour. It allows for both uh, hand winding and hacking. And it has accuracy of plus uh, 12 seconds per day, plus or minus 12 seconds per day. 200 meters uh, water resist, even with this remarkable thin case, 200 meters water resist. So I think that is a, a beautiful uh, performance by itself. On top we can find a sapphire crystal, unlike the earlier uh, washes that I've shown you. Sapphire with AR coating. Dimensions 42 millimeters across. Lock to lock, very, very long, much longer than all the watches that we saw earlier. 49 and a half millimeters. But because they really curve, um, it feels shorter on the wrist. It depends on your wrist uh, shape, of course, but yeah, it wears shorter than the 49 and a half to me because of that uh, strong curvature here. Thickness of only 10.6 millimeters. So very thin watch, very thin profile. We have a matte black printed dial there's some uh, loom applied, but it's not the strongest loom in the world. I think the date window here at this uh, three o'clock position is beautiful because of that black uh, background. It reads Swiss made. Um, it has a very thin coin edge bezel that is very stiff to use. Um, but it works all right and it uh, aligns pretty well. Just a little bit of play. We have a very thick uh, screw down crown. Really like that. With the uh, Glycine logo here on the crown as well. Uh, what else to say? Retail price, uh, if you're lucky, somewhere around 320 US dollars. And I think that is a bargain for a uh, Swiss automatic dive watch with a sapphire crystal and a movement that is kind of like a standard movement, the ETA, but uh, Glycine did um, adjust the movement a little bit. I'm not sure what they did, but they call it an in-house movement because of the fact that they did something with it. So this is the logo on the case back. I really like the uh, logo here and let me throw it on the scale yeah so only uh, 74 grams and let me uh, throw it back on the uh, NATO here just to show you a wristwatch shot because although this watch is on the bigger side with the 42 millimeters thanks to that very thin case I think I do get away with it, but you be the judge to that. 
So there we go, the glycine combat sub on the wrist. And as you can see with my 6.3 inches, it is a bit on the bigger side, but because it's so thin, um, it sits very comfortably on the wrist. Now let's proceed here with the uh, final uh, watch in this uh, uh, video. This is the Squale 1545, the uh, Maxi Dial with the uh, SEL uh, bracelet. It comes on a beautiful 20 millimeter metal bracelet, but again, I prefer the NATO strap, especially in summer. In this watch, we can find the ETA Movement 2824-2, which is you know very similar to the Glycine, uh, 28,800 uh, beats per hour, 25 joules, 42 uh, hour power reserve. It uh, allows for both um, hand winding and hacking. Accuracy of plus uh, minus uh, 12 seconds a day up to plus minus 30 seconds a day. So there's a bit of um, um, variance there. Uh, 200 meters water resist sapphire crystal on top with AR coating. And we can find that uh, date uh, magnification here, at the three o'clock position, a, a white background here and very uh, conservative dimensions of 40 millimeters across without the crown, lock to lock uh, 48 uh, millimeters and a thickness of 13 uh, millimeters. So all in all, uh, very um, similar dimensions to the Invicta watch that I showed you earlier on. The price is uh, $570. And what, what really makes this watch stand out, I think is the um, the heritage of the uh, Squale brand. What also makes it really stand out is those big, huge hour markers. Uh, let's compare it here with the uh, Invicta. You can see that the Squale hour markers are almost double size. Uh, but unlike the Invecta, this DAO is printed. So unfortunately, uh, no applied hour markers. Um, the uh, insert here of this bezel is uh, ceramic. So that is something I think very beautiful. And the ceramic allows the bezel to stay uh, pristine for a very long time. So this is really a timeless watch. Now let me show you the back of this watch. And as you can see from the NATO strap, I think this is yeah, one of my favorite beater watches. I take it to the beach, to the pools. Um, here we can see sapphire crystal, Swiss made, 20 meters, 20 atmosphere, 200 meters. And um, 1545 with that Squale logo. Uh, you can see a shark. Um, simply, I think a beautiful watch. Um, Bezel is very easy to uh, operate. It's not too stiff, not too loose either. Beautiful Mercedes hand, sword hand style. Nice second hand with that uh, lollipop. And I think the dial is just simply uh, beautiful. I think it's very balanced. Now let me throw it on the scale. So the case, it uh, weighs uh, 79, 79 grams. And finally, let's uh, show you what it looks like on the wrist. So I think this is one of the better uh, Rolex uh, Submariner homages that has a bit of its own style. So there we have it on the wrist. I really like the look of that uh, ceramic uh, bezel insert. And as you can see, I think this watch wears very nice on my wrist, uh, very similar to the Invicta watch. And together with the uh, Seiko SKX-013, I think this is my favorite fit for a dive watch. It really blends in with uh, any outfit, especially uh, uh, if you uh, pair it up with a leather strap or with a metal bracelet. Uh, you can you could even wear this a little bit uh, dressy, I guess. 
but I really like the look with the um, NATO straps. So that's it guys, we had the uh, Vostok here on the left, Invicta, Orient, Citizen, Seiko, Seiko, Glycine and Squale. Uh, what to expect here? I think I'm about to sell the Minu Turtle. I'm thinking about reducing the size of my watch collection simply because I have too many watches currently. I don't have time to wear all of them. I think I'm, I'm, I'm about to sell this one. Definitely the uh, Seiko and the Squale, they will stay there indefinitely. Also the Citizen watch will never leave. I might sell the Orient, I might sell the Invicta, probably Vostok I will also keep. So th that is just this short video to show you uh, some watches that you can purchase under $600. If you're looking for your first or your second or third or fourth or fifth uh, automatic dive watch. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'm very curious uh, which dive watch you prefer of this um, collection of eight uh, dive watches. Um, and let me know why you think uh, a certain dive watch is the best. Um, look forward to hearing from you. Have a wonderful day and see you soon.